Namaskar, greetings from the Temple of Fine Arts, Coimbatore. So this is the second part of uh, a conversation with Sri Ambi Subramanyam. You will find the link to the first part in the description below. So shall we continue? So Ambi, we are back again. So uh, today we'll talk about the art that uh, you know has brought you so far. So. uh indian music is about rag and tal ragam talam so uh when we when we talk about a ragam it is definitely more than who have whoever has dealt with it like really deeply they know uh it's definitely more than just a set of uh, swaras and the main note there and then the main phrase here there so how do you perceive Uh, a rag and how do you uh, get about knowing a rag so well i think of um ragam as a melodic structure i think just uh so i think the beauty of indian music sometimes is that you have so many things at your disposal and you are able to kind of create the music that resonates with you uh, which is why i uh I think the beauty of our music is if you hear ten uh, people doing ten uh, same composition, you'll you'll hear ten completely different versions. Um, but there needs to be some structure uh, based on what you're creating. So uh, I think when you look at your raga, that is your melodic structure, and your thala is your rhythmic structure. Um, but when I kind of try to learn a raga. of course you have you try to learn the scale and you try to learn the patterns uh the typical patterns that are there in a raga uh you try to learn the typical phrases um all of that and then of course uh you also try to learn and listen to a lot of different compositions in the same raga so that you hear how uh 10 or uh, different uh, great composers have kind of approached that uh raga i think after a while um you kind of get a uh, a feel and sense of that raga so that when you're creating uh, say a phrase that you've not heard before uh, you kind of mentally uh, feel that okay this this is this is right this fits in with uh, with all the other 10 phrases or if you're playing something um uh, it may be uh the right notes it may be the right ornamentation it might be um uh the right kind of uh if you're looking at um uh, the passage of notes in in the avarohanam or avarohanam it may be correct but still the phrase somehow feels wrong so i think um i try to get to a point uh by listening where uh i am able to kind of listen to a phrase that i'm playing and i'm like okay there's something wrong with this this is not fitting in this raga so maybe i need to change something so i think eventually you want to kind of get into a space where you're feeling uh, uh feeling that structure and you're able to create uh things where you're not too bound by okay fine uh, this is what what this person did so i need to play this exact thing you're still feeling free in terms of your expression but you are able to kind of immediately uh sense that okay this is appropriate this is not appropriate in this setting sometimes uh i'm sure you get a uh, request to you know play a certain rag uh that way so uh there are some ragas that you know we we can um uh, we know we understand like you mentioned just now we understand everything we know everything so we kind of like we we uh, we can play it with our brain there but it's a totally different level when you start playing with your heart so when your heart gets gets involved and then you really love that rag and so you get so deep into it and you kind of make it your own so what would your personal uh make it your own raga be your personal favorites well i think that kind of changes based on uh what kind of mood i am in at that point 
and also that has kind of changed over time as well so i remember uh, i used to really love uh, as a kid playing say akirwani or mohanam uh, those kind of ragas uh, then later it became uh, i used to love playing charu kesi for a long period of time and sarasangi then uh, i used to really love playing uh, dharmavati or madhuvanti uh, those kind of ragas uh, but i think that kind of totally changes uh, now based on what kind of mood you're in and also it 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 depends on uh, the situation so a lot of times and that this is something i've learned a lot from my dad um, you prepare something you decide that you want to uh play something for a concert and then you land up there and then for whatever reason it seems like the wrong choice or it seems like uh something else would be better to play so uh as somebody who likes to be prepared normally i used to maybe ignore that uh kind of voice in my head and like no 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 uh it could also be uh, uh maybe a, a skill thing where i may not have been confident to to play something i've not practiced on stage um i'm like okay i i i worked on this let me play this uh but i think uh, now i try to embrace that and like okay for for whatever reason um could be that my hands are are really uh running today so let me take something that's technically challenging or it could be that my hands are are not working today so let me take something else or um uh, if i'm feeling in a very pensive mood then if i try to play something happy there's going to be a disconnect um but i try to embrace that or you or you you go there and for some reason you sit on stage and you're like if i play this the audience won't like this i think the audience wants to hear this and so i i think is always a kind of little bit of a push and pull um based on what you want to play and what you think the audience wants to hear uh i i think it's a little naive to always say that at uh, it doesn't matter what the audience wants or what they they think i'm just going to do whatever i want uh that doesn't always work uh, but at the same time you don't always want to just play what you think the audience wants because at the end of each concert then you will feel miserable thinking that you haven't said what you want to say so it's um it's a very thin line there uh but i i try to kind of embrace that so if if i go on stage and i i feel that something will be more appropriate than what i've planned uh i think it's important to kind of Uh, uh go for it so you may make a few more mistakes because you may not be as well prepared or but then it has that kind of extra dimension because you are playing what you feel yeah so true uh we see ambi subramanyam in a lot of collaborations so including like uh, the thai sadam project and uh, the naming of it also i just want to ask you how how you come up with the names and uh, also with this uh, wwf's uh, india's earth hour for causes like this so uh, how do you choose uh, like what to do or it, it just comes your way or do you go for it sometimes how do you, how do you collaborate i think it's a combination sometimes uh, you listen to an artist that Uh, you are really inspired by or uh, you listen to a, a piece of music and you're like wow this is really um fantastic um i would love to do something with with this artist um or sometimes you get an email or somebody calls you and saying would you be interested to do something uh but i think first and foremost what i look for is a uh, kind of wavelength matching both in terms of musicality and both in terms of personality so i think uh, sometimes you hear um, great music but i may not see 
anything that I can do uh, with that other artist in a meaningful way. So, so then maybe I may not approach that, even though I have so much love and respect for that artist. Um, so I think it's important to kind of, uh, when you're listening, when you're kind of um, thinking of collaborations, uh, you need to be able to see that you're doing something meaningful. Because it's, it's not just, uh, of course, it's not just kind of check, uh, checking off this collaboration, okay, I've worked with this person, worked with that person. But um, five years down the line, will you, li- will you listen to that uh, piece of music uh, and be happy with that? Will you be, um, even if it's not the most popular thing that you've done, or if, uh, for whatever reason, will you look back at that and say, okay, I'm happy that I did that. So for me, that is very important. Um, And then, uh, of course, uh, wavelengths matching. I think uh, as as individuals, it's very important that you kind of connect uh, for anything to be uh, anything more than a one-off. So for something to be uh, kind of uh, long-term and generally I, I do look at collaborations and a lot of these things being long-term because I think it's important like sometimes the first piece you kind of scratch the surface then the more and more you work with an artist uh, more ideas you kind of get with each other and uh, you also have that freedom uh, between artists like if 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 i'm saying something that they don't like they'll be free enough to say like no i don't like this idea let's try something else that that freedom is very important uh, because i think sometimes when when you're meeting artists that you respect greatly even if there's something that you may not like immediately you, the tendency will just be to say yes that's great yes that's great yes that's great but i think it's, it's important to kind of cross that barrier where you are like okay this is great. Can we try something else here? Uh, so, so that's what I look at uh, while collaborating, and uh, uh, I think also it's it's important, especially if um, they are uh, kind of performing uh, a genre that you are not familiar with. It's important to understand that and study that a little bit, so that you understand a little more where the artist is coming from. Uh, in your answer just now, you also mentioned two kinds of artists. That is the senior ones that you collaborate with, and and you do you you perform you have performed with legendary ones and also upcoming uh, artists. So, uh, can you like uh, give us a little bit more insight on how the experience is? How different is it? it, is, it and is how do you handle? How do you handle that? It's very different, but I I would say equally enjoyable. I think, uh, like for example, uh, we had the great uh, fortune of uh, working with uh, Aruna Sairamji, and she is just such a legend. I mean, in 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 every facet, there are so many things to love about uh, her, whether it's her music or the way she approaches uh, things. So for for me, it was a great learning. Uh, to kind of work with an artist like that where uh, generally when you see people who have achieved that level it's very rare to see them so uh, so secure about everything and always uh, to see her always in this kind of uh, learn mode <laughs> so to speak and uh, like for me it, it, it was uh, it was really refreshing to see like she would, she would come and say, okay, this is something I'm not good at. And then all of us are just looking at her and stare at like... <laughs> so it's, it's, it's very nice to see that. And, and because of that, you see that everybody, um, after the first five, 10 minutes of just kind of looking at her and smiling, everybody is able to contribute better. Everybody is able to kind of, uh, everybody has a voice. Uh, to to say that um, can we try this or can we work on this which otherwise uh, you won't have like if if you have an artist of that stature and then uh, all of us are are um, like a generation younger and uh, nowhere compared to uh, where she is 
if if she if she just said let's do it this way uh, i'm comfortable this way we would have still been happy and we would have done it but then the output that you get is um she will look, she will look at uh, different artists or different um uh, whether it's the camera person or it's this person and say okay uh, you are very good at what you do you tell me if i'm doing something wrong you tell me and then i will change so i i think that um that kind of thing is is fantastic to see uh i really enjoy working with um, with younger artists as well uh, a lot of these collaboration i think it's important um i think i i'm a little more uh, potentially sensitive to to these things because i i kind of came up as a young artist and i i had the kind of um uh, uh honor and an opportunity to work with with people who are um older more experienced um and kind of uh, legends in their fields so i think uh when when i kind of work with younger artists it's also important to know that like recently i i worked uh, i did a piece with uh, a 9 year old mridangam player and it was uh, his name was saket um, he is actually a student at sapa very 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 talented uh, mridangam player and um, like that i i get to work with uh, with kids a lot of kids uh, through sapa and i think it's important to understand that though you may be senior or you may be um a kind of older or you may be kind of uh, uh, leading the collaboration uh, it's important to understand that sometimes they have amazing ideas that you never would have thought of and um sometimes i see that uh, a lot when we're working with sapa uh, kids um i might have had some plan or some composition and then some kid will come and say can we try it this way or um this is a little high for me can i do this instead uh and then you really kind of um you get so many new ideas we've actually recently been working with a couple of um teenage songwriters in in sapa so they uh, they have so many brilliant ideas the way they think is very different from the way i think uh and uh i am so much richer for the, uh because of that experience so i think it's it's important to kind of uh, in order to expand your horizon work with all different types of artists that you respect and i think even even when you are kind of working with a 7 year old or 8 year old um it's important that if you are working with them you respect what they are saying and you respect uh, their kind of a uh, creative process as well so sometimes it may be a little more well defined sometimes it may be a little less well defined but if you are able to kind of work with them you might be able to come up with a lot of cool things that you may not have been able to do individually and uh, the sapa project you mentioned this uh, how how uh, how was it started and how, what are your dreams tell us everything about it and what are your dreams for it Well uh Sapa started in 2007 uh there essentially we kind of started as a place to um to teach global music to young children so through that uh in 20 2014 we went uh into schools so we started our Sapa in schools where now we teach uh 30000 children uh music and i think uh from there we've been able to kind of uh bring high quality music uh, and music education to a lot of kids in india it's been a lot of fun i think uh, we also had the sapa show which was aired in shankara tv and that kind of reached uh, millions and millions of kids uh, so i think through there uh, the idea was essentially to create these kind of peak experiences and create that exposure that we had as as kids i think um we were really lucky to kind of be able to have those experiences when we were interacting with with great musicians from different places 
um, whether it's the same type of music or different type of music. Uh, so I think the idea was to be able to give that access to uh, kind of first generation music learners. So kind of um, uh, debunk this whole uh, in order to become a musician you need to be from a music family. Uh, because Bindu and I strongly feel that it's it's very very much based on exposure. So when you talk about musical families, um, that's because while I was from a musical family, I heard music of the highest quality from the time I was, uh, you know, a toddler. So I think it's important to bring that exposure, and we we see that a lot at Sapa where. Uh, when you say uh, when you take in say students at age 10 uh, who are learning music from the first uh, um, right from the beginning uh, it's very easy to kind of tell who's from a musical family or who's not from a musical family uh, but then when you take kids at age 3 after 2 years or 3 years or 4 years of training those same kids uh, when they're aged six, seven, eight, you can't tell who's from a musical family, who's not from a musical family, it becomes totally irrelevant at that point. So our uh, our idea was, and our hope was to kind of bring that exposure uh, to to anyone who's interested in to make uh, music a part of kind of everyone's life. And I think through Sapa and Schools, we've also been able to work with um, eight thousand children. Uh, completely free of cost in in government schools and in uh, underserved communities. So that has kind of been our um, our, our big uh, our desire with Sapa. Through the last year, we've also been able to uh, we've been working on building a platform uh, where we can get uh, some of the greatest musicians uh, like Arna Sairamji, uh, Shantanu Moitra, Ji, uh, Usha Utubji, of course my parents. Uh, and a lot of other artists from around the world to kind of make courses and make um, uh, all these different types of music accessible. And uh, and when we talk about accessible, it's also to make music uh, and present it in a way that can be received um, by young children all around the world. This is such an important thing in today's world especially you know when uh, kids are the first thing that the kids are waiting to get their hands on is smartphones right. so uh, at this at this time to have something like this is definitely a blessing and we wish the very very best for sapa Thank you so, much. so finally for today uh, your impromptu instagram nights that you know so how how uh, what was the thought behind it? Well, to be honest, I mean, we started it during the lockdown. It was, it was kind of a bit of, no, actually, it, we did it um, a couple of years before that. Uh, the idea was to kind of um, have these request nights, so to speak, uh, where uh, we are doing these Instagram stories. Some some of them are fifteen seconds, some of them are thirty seconds. And um, it was a way to just kind of do something fun and not think too much about uh, a lot of these things and to be able to play all these, a bunch of different songs. Um, I remember, I mean, a lot of times we went in with different themes. So we would have like these 90s themes or we would have, say, a cartoon theme or we would have a TV show theme or, or any of these different things. Um, it, it was really, really fun for me because the requests would come and then within an hour uh, you have to put up everything. So you have to learn eight songs, nine songs, ten songs, how many ever uh, in like an hour. And um, uh, it was a lot of fun because um, and of course we right now we're not currently doing that. Hopefully once the situation improves uh, it would be nice to do that again. Uh, but it's 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 really nice because uh, it also expands your horizon. Uh, part a lot of the reason uh, part of the reason why we do this also is um, that it kind of expands 
my horizon personally i end up listening to uh, different songs requested by different people that i may not have heard otherwise and uh, so during that request night i end up listening to such uh, uh, beautiful pieces of music and uh, that kind of expands my horizon a bit this nice. nice. definitely brightens up all your followers uh, days <laughs> so we saw the person that ambi subramanyam is and we have uh, spoken to him about his art we shall go a little bit into the life of shri ambi subramanyam in our next episode do watch out for it and we shall of course notify you well in advance so here's to again staying safe stay healthy goodbye thank you <laughs>